Come on, people, let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you that you are the one that we are here to see today. We thank you, God, that you are here to meet with us. You didn't just... You didn't just want us to come here for nothing. You, you are here already, ready to see and ready to speak to us, ready for us to hear a message that you've given our brother, and we thank you, God, for that. Now, Lord, we ask for clarity of mind. We ask that we'll have clarity in the spirit, that we will have an open heaven above this place, that we will not only hear the message that our brother is speaking, that we will get clarity from the Holy Spirit of what we need to know. Father, we align ourselves with the Father, with the Son, and with the Holy Spirit right now. And we thank you that your word is going to be clear to us today. In Jesus' name. Now let's speak in tongues for just a bit. We thank you. Holy Spirit, come here to this place. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. You are the one true God. You are the one true God. Oh, glory to the one. Oh, my goodness. Can you feel the presence of angels here now? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for sending your angels round about us right now. You're so good to us. You're so kind. You are the good God. You are the good God. You are our Messiah. We glorify your name. Thank you, Yeshua. You are my friend. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to the one true God. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you. Let's just lift our hands and glorify his name. Glory, thank you. You're the king. You're the one we love. You're the one we love. You're the one that comes to see what's going on in the hearts of men. So, Father, we thank you. We love you, Lord. We love you. Oh, my goodness, your presence is sweet. We love you. We just want to be in your presence. We just want to be where you are. Thank you, Jesus. See you, Thank you, Yeshua. Glory. Okay, so while we were praying, I thought of something else I need to bring up. We have this wonderful, uh, we have this wonderful layout of books over here. Some of you may have seen this. Uh, we have this wonderful layout of books over here. We will have them for sale if you would not like to buy until um, after Shabbat is over. We completely understand that. We'll have a way to do that through an envelope and a stamp and a... Uh, it'll all be ready. You can take it, or by the time we're done, it's going to be dark. <laughs> so think about that after the after it's all over tonight, and we're going to give our brother all the time he wants. Okay. Yes. Um, so I put five o'clock on the uh, email, but we'll just see what happens. Okay. So y'all may be seated, and without any further, we'll just um, go ahead and invite our brother. And we thank you, Lord, for the anointing that's upon him. Thank you for the message that he has. We just give you all glory and praise and honor. And what an honor to have you here, brother. So, praise the Lord. Well, we feel the same. God bless you. I'm already starting to sweat, so I just got one more shirt to take off. And I'll be able to this. So, I, um, I want to thank you. I want to thank Stephanie for hosting this and, and allowing me to share this message. And then I want to thank you all for, for coming to see it. I am going to offend you. Okay, just, I'm just giving you the fair warning. I will offend you. So please don't take it personally. I do that to everybody. Okay? So I'm not here to pick on anybody, but I'm going to say something that is going to challenge you. And I want you to be challenged. Yes. I want you to not believe a thing I say. Okay? So if you guys in the front just know I walk, I pace, but I don't want you to be afraid of what I'm saying, because what I'm going to say is going to scare you, okay? Because I don't, I don't hold my punches. I don't believe you. He doesn't believe me. Okay? I need, he hasn't got suspenders on, he needs to get suspended. I'm going to knock the socks off you. Yes. Before he offends us, we'll also say that there's going to be an offering available over here. If you would like to do it at any of the breaks, it will be available, okay? All right, go up.
Don, his chair's up in the front. So next week I'm going to be on GLC. They've uh, heard about what I'm talking about, and they're going to give me four hours. Where's the remote? Do you have a remote? Where are you going to stick the remote? Shove it into a USB. I've already got the USB being used. Okay. Good to see. going to be talking about the sabbatical and jubilee year cycles. It's the one thing that nobody talks about. And I just started asking questions about it, uh, I don't know, forever ago. And nobody had any answers. So I just put them in the back of my head. And as I continued in my walk, I discovered them in 2005. Originally, I wanted to put this banner up. It's a 10-foot banner by 20 feet long. And I want you to understand, this is where Adam started, mm -hmm. right? So I'm trying to show you and impress with you time. How do you, how do you quantify time? And we're down here at the end. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm going to present to you today. And I'm going to show you how you can prove this. Because, you know, I'm Canadian. And all Canadians are good looking, and I know you're jealous. <laughs> but you need to be able to prove this to yourself. Because like this gentleman does not believe me, and I want him to be able to prove it so that he can teach you. What's your name? Anonymous. Anonymous is going to teach you. <laughs> and I'm now going to pick on Anonymous all day. <laughs> Uh, the one north of the United States. <laughs> Ontario, Ontario. Okay, so I'm doing my advertising right now because we're about to get started. This is the book I wrote. It explains, it answers every question that you have. <coughs> it will ask, ask questions that you didn't even know you had if you want to learn how to do this. Once you've learned this about in Jubilee years, prophecy becomes alive because... You cannot understand prophecy unless you start to obey the Bible. Amen. Right? Amen. So if you're not keeping these jubilee years, you're not obeying. Wow. And if you're not obeying them, you're missing out on prophecy. Amen. So if you, do, if you don't want any books, this would be the one book to get. Okay? <laughs> get this book. It's about the ten virgins. <laughs> Which one are you? Okay, so yeah, all the ladies with gray hair looking at each other. Which one are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. So if you believe in the rapture, here's another book for you. Again, you cannot understand the rapture unless you understand the holy of Leviticus 23. Jehovah is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, I call him Jehovah. If you call him God or Yahweh or hey you, I'm good with that. Okay? Don't be offended by what I call him. This is my, well, that's the one I let go in August this year. The restoration of all things. People forget, the rapture people forget. Before Messiah comes, but what did Messiah say? Elijah must come first and restore all things. So where's Elijah? What had to be restored? That's the question we're going to ask there. This is a book I just released uh, last week. The abomination that makes desolate. And that's what I'm going to show you today because the countdown has already started. And there's the next book there, The Ten Days of Awe, right here. That's the one I'm writing on, working on right now. And it'll be out, uh, I don't know when it'll be out. I hate editing. I can't spell. You'll find out I can't speak English properly. And you'll wonder how I wrote a book because I only got 51% English all through high school. They gave me 51 because I actually had 45. They didn't want to have me come back the next year. <laughs> yeah. 
So, where, uh, okay, uh, you understand. Where are we in God's clock? Okay? He's going to come back at any time. He could be here today. you got to repent today. Amen. No. Amen. <coughs> no. I can guarantee he's not coming back today, tomorrow, or this week. I guarantee he's not coming back in 2023. But you can't guarantee that the person will be here. Well, I'm not going to tell how long you're going to live. Right? I've got not, not another person to pick on here. i got more. We're going by scripture. I'm going to show you scriptures. Okay, so where are we in God's clock? Right? Yes. I've got, I've got all the hecklers in the front row. Right? I mean, it depends where you're interested in where you are in your walk. Right? And I don't know. So um, most Christians would do good with the riddle. It was a real not a command. Mm -hmm. That's a basic training for them. So Second Kings is where I'm going to start, though. Mm -hmm. Second Kings 19.29. And it shall be a sign to you, you shall eat this year such things as grow in themselves, and in the second year that which bring the same, and in the third year sow and reap and plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. What's that mean? Yeah. What's that mean? This guy can't speak English. What's it mean? What's your name? My name's Alex. Alex. Yes. Yeah. What's it mean? Jubilee. Jubilee. How? Oh, how do you know that? Actually, where where is it? No, say? it's not that. It's a seven. No, you don't look it up. I'm going to destroy you. What I want you to do is I want you. I don't want you to fall asleep. So I'm going to pick on you. I'm going to engage you. I want you to think. Most people read this and just keep on going through. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay, well, a person who would probably think that because we're talking about two years in a row not planting, that would be the seventh sabbatical year followed by the year of Jubilee. And yes. what is the seventh year? The seventh year is the sabbatical year. But which one? The, according to a normal understanding of Jubilee years, it would be the first of the two years that you're not planting. No, you okay, so you missed. So what we're reading here, i got too many things in my hands here. So what you're reading here, first of all, it's a sign. Mm -hmm. Understand that Hezekiah was about to be attacked, right? right? Mm -hmm. So he's praying for a sign. He thinks he's about to die, because if uh, Sennacherib invades, he will die. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stick to my notes, or I'll get way ahead. Okay, uh, this one. So we have right here, it's the seventh sabbatical year. That's what I was trying to get to to say, sir. It's the seventh one. You only have a sabbatical year followed by another sabbatical year when it's the 49th year and the 50th year. That's the only time. So God, Jehovah, has given you a huge clue because it's a sign. And a sign represents the Sabbaths. The Sabbaths are a sign. The holy days are a sign. The jubilee and sabbatical years are a sign. He's telling you, I'm giving you a sign. Eat this year such as they grow themselves. Whatever grows of its own, you can eat. You do not plant, you do not harvest. Next year, you do the same. You do not plant, you do not harvest. And in the third year, you can plant and sow and harvest. So Hezekiah is about to die. Here's a promise from God that you're not going to die. You're going to live at least three years, right? Mm -hmm. Later on, he gives him 15 years to live. Mm -hmm. So Hezekiah has been told he's going to live three years. That same night, 180,000 Assyrians died, right? Mm -hmm. right? Okay, you all know what I'm talking about. It just so happens to be one of the most documented years in history. 701 B.C. and 700 B.C. If we didn't have this event with uh, Sennacherib, we would never know when any is Israelite king reigned. There's only two dates. This one, and this one here, when Shalemazer comes against Ahab, and they record it. And this is 853 BC. So if it wasn't for these two dates, these two events, 
there's seven or there's three of these prisms in Chicago, London, and Jerusalem. And I think there might even be seven, but there's three that I know about. So these two dates tell you when the Israelite kings reigned. And one of them is a jubilee year. Because of that, the, uh, the Assyrians recorded their, their chronology according to a, lead, a leading official. So that's why we know when, it, when he reigned or when he, he ruled. And then they have um, uh, astronomical events mm -hmm. take place that they can sync this with. So the Assyrian chronology then goes down to the uh, Babylonian chronology, and then Ptolemy. And then that's modern times. And that's how we know when they reigned. But these two dates tell us when these Israelite kings reigned. Otherwise, we've never known. There is no record of them anywhere. Okay. So this is why this is important. That's why I start here. So with this... One little bit of information. You've now got one. If you leave here today, right now, you can now prove when every sabbatical through the years, throughout history, just by count by sevens, going back in time or going forward in time. <coughs> every sabbatical year. I'll give you a clue. The next sabbatical year, the next land rest year, starts in March of this year, 2023. The Jews kept the sabbatical year last year. I'll explain that later. If you count from 700 BC by 49, you will hit every sabbatical year, or every jubilee year, throughout history, going forward and backward in time. Okay? Now that piece of information is worth about $50 a head, right? <laughs> We're done. I got gas money to go to the next place. That is priceless information. And you've just proven it. E-work grows with itself this year, e-work grows with itself next year, and what after that you can plant so and harvest. Yes, sir. George, I have a quick question. What is a prism? Is that like a detailed record or detailed chronology? That's it's, the first time I've heard of that term. Okay. Yes, it's a prism, that's what they call it. It's just a record, it's written in um, uh, Assyrian, but it's, uh, you know, the sticks that they right, did it with. Right, right. It's a record of the annals, and they even have these uh, going all the way back to the creation of Adam. But those are not sequential. They're broken up, there's pieces missing. So that's called the Assyrian king list, right? Or the, uh, not the Assyrian king list, the... Um, I don't know, some, some king list. There's another king list. Okay? But, yeah, so they record, it's a, just a record of, I'm a great king. Here's what I did. These are all my accomplishments. He records on this one that he caged up Hezekiah, like a bird. Right? No, he didn't cage him up. Not literal. He kept, he boxed him into Jerusalem. But he couldn't say he didn't defeat him. He couldn't say that he lost 180,000 men. So in order to keep his head on his shoulders, mm -hmm. he has to brag about how successful he was. Mm -hmm. I caged up uh, Jer uh, Hezekiah. He gave me all this gold and silver. That's what this says. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say he defeated Hezekiah, which is exactly what Sec Second Kings says. Right. Mm -hmm. right? So this prism concerned, uh, confirms Second King. Okay? That prism is the same as this one here. This is just Shalemazer doing the same thing, bragging about how he defeated Ahab. So with that information, now we come forward in time, and I'm going to show you something that I found. 8 BC happens to be right here. 8 BC, it's a sabbatical year. 28 AD. Now here's one for all y'all. Oh, I'm, I'm talking Texas already, mm -hmm. all y'all. Randy rubbing off on that. Okay. Yeshua says, this is the acceptable year. And everyone automatically jumps in. I'm pointing the laser at it. Sorry, I apologize if I do that. Um, Yeshua says, this is the acceptable year. He's reading the Isaiah scroll. Right? That's Luke 4.16. 
everyone jumps on that and says, this is a jubilee year. Wrong. You do the chronology, and it's 28 AD. 28 AD, why? Well, because he either died at 30, 31, I believe it's 31. Some people say it was 34, or others 29. That's a, again, the, it was a real not a command. That'll answer that question for you. <coughs> Oops. 28 AD was the acceptable year. That's when he began his ministry. Mm -hmm. It was a sabbatical year. We know that now because you've now proven 2 Kings 19.29. You can prove that. 42 AD was mentioned by Josephus as a sabbatical year. 42 right here. I got it in the red because that's blood moons. I'm doing something else there. So that's a sabbatical year. 56 AD is a note of indebtedness in the second year of Nero. So that's 56. <coughs> the temple's destroyed in a sabbatical year. That was 70 AD. That was also a blood moon year. We have uh, the Bar Kopa revolt, 133, 134. Why did the Bar Kopa revolt begin? How did that get started? It got started because of the Jubilee year. They're about to defeat the Romans. Simon is our Messiah. Uh -huh. The star, right? Rabbi Akiva is building him up because he believes in the Jubilee year. Trouble is, Simon gets killed. He doesn't come back to life. There's a lot of stuff going on here with uh, Simon and uh, Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi is a student of Rabbi Akiva. He wrote the chronology based on this. That chronology is the one that the Jews use today. It's got a major fault at the beginning. They don't see it, and they just carry on. But Rabbi Yose fudged the dates. He said that the second temple was destroyed at the end of the year, and they think it's 69, some say it's 68. But then Rabbi Yose changed the date for the first temple being destroyed in 586 <coughs> by 240 years. <coughs> yeah. Why did he do that? Because of Second King, uh, not Second Kings, because of uh, Daniel 9, 24 to 27. Again, the 2300 Days of Hell explains that four verses, 750 pages to explain four verses. That's because of this Bar Kopa revolt. We'll come back to that in a bit. <coughs> so we found these tombstones in Zoar. Zoar is at the bottom of the uh, Dead Sea, not the bottom, at the southern end of the Dead Sea. It's on the Jordanian side of the river. It's a community that used to live there um, right after the temple fell. So it says, this is the tombstone of Hannah, daughter of Haniel, the priest who died on the Sabbath day. So that gives me a day I can work with. It's a Sabbath day. That's today. The first festival of Passover on the 15th day. So the Sabbath day was the 15th and it was a Passover. I point this out because there's this 14th, 15th controversy. Here's proof from a tombstone that the Passover is kept on the 15th at sunset as the beginning of the day. Um, the 15th day of the month of Nisan in the fifth year of the sabbatical cycle, which is the year 369 years after the destruction of the temple. And that is pure gold right here. Because now all I have to do is take 369, add 70 to it, because I know I've proven that one that is, and I get 439 years. So 439 uh, AD is right here. And what did she say? On the 15th day of the month, in the fifth year of the sabbatical cycle. One, two, three, four, five. That tombstone just confirms 2 Kings 19.29. I got goosebumps just saying it again. I've said this many times. I'm all color covered in lint, aren't I? It's on my sweater. And I just noticed it. I apologize. You've got a big one on your left shoulder. Yeah. It's really annoying me. Thank you. I was getting too hot. I had to take the sweater off. It's a brand new sweater. My wife said, you got to get dressed up. You can't go there looking like you do. Dress up for these people. I'm too hot. Don't worry about it. OK. 
Okay, now I'm getting self-conscious. Oh, no. Anyway, this tombstone is priceless. Now, most of the experts look at these tombstones, they can't figure them out. Because they're going by a what they call the Hillel calendar. I happen to know both the Hillel calendar and what they call the Barley Aviv calendar, or the Crescent Moon. I have programs that run both. So I can put this through a program and see which one it is. They discard all these tombstones, and the most extensive collection they have is 17. I've got 30. All 30 of them match. All 30 of them confirm what I'm showing you here. Right? Here's another one. May the soul of Hasidiah, the priest's son of Demetan, rest, who died on Thursday, again, a day of the week, the fifth of Av, that's the first month, in the fourth year of the sabbatical cycle, which is the year 445 after the destruction of the temple. So that gives me 515. I looked this up. The fourth year of the sabbatical cycle. Bingo. Bingo. I've got 30 of them. Prove me wrong. My website's called sightofmoon.com, and I say prove all things. I dare you to prove me wrong on anything that I teach. Anything anonymous. Yes. Yes, there is a reward. Well, prove me wrong, we'll see what it is. You prove me wrong, I can stop doing this. I don't have to do this. I can go home, and I can put away my Bible, and you can prove me wrong. So I challenge you. I challenge every single one of you to prove me wrong. So that's two. I've got 30 tombstones like this. But here's the best one of all. Oh, yes. Rambam. Maimonides. I'm doing an interview on Nehemiah uh, Gordon's radio show. Now, I don't know if you all know Nehemiah Gordon. Yes. I think I'm a big fan of his. He's about to bushwhack me. Uh -oh. Live on the radio. Uh -oh. You can't see it, but I'm just... I'm, Okay, I, I never heard this one. I'd never heard of this before. The Mishnah Torah, Hilkot Shemitah, V. Yovel, 10, 5 to 6. Here's what Rambam himself wrote. He's editing his own Mishnah. Okay, so think about it. You wrote a book, you're editing it yourself, and then you die later. So you now we now know that he approved everything he said. Right. It wasn't somebody else changing his notes. And Nehemiah made a big point of this. That's why I'm making a big point of it too, right? The year of the Shemitah is known and famous among the Genoam. Those are the uh, ancient sages of Judah. And the people of the land of Israel. They all counted only the years of the destruction, the multiples of seven. According to this calculation, this year, which is the year that he's saying this, 1107 A.D., Year of the destruction is the year following a Shemitah. It is the year following a Shemitah. We rely on this and we teach this calculation for matters of tithes, produce, and loans. Tradition and precedent, Maase, are great pillars in this instruction and, it's, and it is appropriate to rely on them. I do my simple math, I get that number, but I'm too excited. I start doing my happy dance. I should have just sat there. Because Naomi went through a whole bunch of loops and the numbers that they have to go through to figure out what year this was. And he comes out and he says it's 1177. So the year after a Shemitah year, both according to Nehemia and myself, using two different methods of calculation, live on the radio, is 1177. Wow. So when we do that, there's my year. There's the Shemitah year. Here's what Nehemiah read in Hebrew. So if you don't believe me, you don't believe me. You read it yourself. I can't read Hebrew. <coughs> but I got the evidence here. I sure hope it is. Okay. It's a year after. Rambam has now confirmed everything that we're showing you in 2 Kings 19.29. You now know when every sabbatical year is throughout history. And you can now prove it. And I've only given you a few here. I've got 89 proofs to back up what I'm saying. So the question now is, okay, 
which Jubilee cycle are we in? Because right. 2 Kings 19.29 doesn't tell you that. It just tells you that we're in one. Mm -hmm. But which one? So now you've got to do a little bit of thinking. You go back to Genesis 6.3. And Jehovah said, My spirit shall not always strive with man in his erring. He is flesh. Yet his day shall be 120 years. fall over. Okay, so what's that mean? What's that mean? Anonymous, what's that mean? Does this mean that Noah is going to speak for 120 years? Because most Christian uh, theologians believe that's what it says. Alex, what's it say? Alex is my, my English major. <laughs> I like Alex. We're on the same boat. Okay. Yes, sir. What's your name? My name's David. David, okay. I think what you're getting at is, is that all the days of man might be 120 jubilee cycles. Is that what you're getting at? That's what Amen. I'm getting at. Amen. Okay, but that's not what Christian theology says. They say we're going to live to 120 is the max, but that's, that's not right. what you're going for. The average. And because, you know, all these other guys before the flood lived 900 years. Right. And then after the flood, there's only 50 years, so the average would be 120. No, that's not what it says, though. Okay? So what does it say? You're right. David, you want to read that? The word is Shana, 120 years. The word years is Shana. Shana. Okay? It means a revolution of time. Now, I mentioned the... the the Sumerian king list, not the Assyrian, Sumerian king uh -huh. list. Remember the Sumerian yeah. king list? They have kings that reign for 28,000 years. Right. Right? What are they counting? <laughs> Minutes. No, those, <laughs> lists, those lists are actually correct. But they're counting Shana. Cycles. So what cycles of time? What cycles of time are they counting? What was the cycle of time before the flood? No. A Shabbat. <coughs> ah. So now you take that 28,000, you divide it by 52, or uh, 52 or 56, we don't know because of the eight or bet years, and suddenly those 28,000 years of rain become more reasonable, like 450. Shana, revelation of time. That's what we're talking about here. That's what Revelation or Genesis 6 3 is talking about. Cycles of time. Got nothing to do with Noah. Got nothing to do with the ark. That's five verses later. So what we're talking about, here you go, David. This is what it's talking about. Mankind. Adam. Not Adam. Adam is mankind. Amen. So we start with the creation of Adam. Now anybody can do this. And you know, I'm not picking on Alex, but I am really a brick. I'm just a stick. I'm the rubber end of the pencil, the broken crayon in the box. I'm not that smart. And I'm not saying that Alex is not that smart. Right? This is an Excel program. You program it to count 1 to 49. Because the Jubilee year is the first year of the next cycle. So you count 1 to 49. The 50th year, oops, the 50th year is year 1. How many of you keep Pentecost Sunday? Okay. Pentecost Sunday is told you in Leviticus 23. You count seven Sabbaths. On the morrow after the seventh Sabbath is the 50th day. That 50th day is Sunday. It's always Pentecost Sunday. That's why they call it Pentecost Monday. No, it's Pentecost Sunday, right? So it's Pentecost Sunday, and it's the 50th day. But what else is Sunday? First day of the week. First day of the week. How do you know that? You go to read about the crucifixion. The women went to the grave on the first day of the week, on Sunday. Right. Resurrection Sunday, right? Right. So the 50th day is the first day. 
it's a model of the Jubilee cycle. The 50th year is also the first year in the count. How do you prove that? 2 Kings 19.29. You've just gone through it. We've now lined up every sabbatical year throughout history. We've shown you. Rambam agrees. Amen. If you were to count by 50, so you go 48, 49, 50, then 1, 2, 3, none of the sabbatical years would line up. When you go 48, 49, 50, then 2, 3, 4, you understand that? 50 being 1. Okay, I've seen, I seen the question mark. Okay. 50 being 1, 2, 3, 4, every sabbatical year and jubilee year line up throughout history. Prove all things. You've now proved it. Okay, so we're starting here with uh, Adam. Year one. How old is a baby when it's six months old? Six months old. Why did you women do that? He's in his first first year. My birthday is next week. I'll be 65. I've been in my 65th year all year. Okay, you see what I'm saying? Adam was created, so it's not year zero. That's year one. It's not year six months. It's not year nine months. It's not year 18 months. You only start counting birthdays after 24 months, don't you? Okay. So Adam, what did Jehovah say to Adam? In the day that you eat of this fruit, you will die. Adam didn't die that day. No, he didn't. Who said yes, he did? How old was he when he ate that fruit? We don't know. But after he ate the fruit, he had Cain and Abel. So what is he talking? And Seth, yeah, I forgot that one. Thank you. I'm talking factually. I don't believe in spiritual stuff. That's why I'm here, right? Okay. Adam died 930 years old. 930 years. Not the year that he ate the fruit. Right? In the day that you ate the fruit was a millennial day. The day he ate it, he died. That's the end of the Jubilee. That's the end of the first millennial day, 980 years. So we've got, where are we now? We now know that we're in the sixth millennium. Right? Everyone knows that. Where we are is where everyone's guessing. And after today, you're going to know. No more guessing. So using 2 Kings 19.29, we can count all 120 Jubilee cycles. And again, the book there, uh, Remembering the Spout of Year 2016, will answer all your questions and explain this. So we're now, okay, so you ready? Okay, that's kindergarten. We're about to jump to grade 9. Okay, so have you got your socks tied up? Anonymous? Okay, okay so 120 times 49 equals 5,880 years. Can you, uh, Randy, grab me that chart there, would you? Can you do that? Just come up here and hold that up, show them the middle section. Randy's going to show you, these are the charts that we have here. The other ones didn't arrive, so you can get this on Amazon. The uh, first first page, 120th Jubilee. Yeah, come here, stand in the middle so you can see it. So what we have here on this side is the chart that you see there. Mm -hmm. And the chart on this side is where the 580 is, mm -hmm. right? This side is the same as that. So one is counting in Gregorian years, all the way down this yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah. This is counting from the creation of Adam, mm -hmm. starting year one, mm -hmm. to the year 5,880. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. So 5,880 is equal to the year 2044. Mm -hmm. We're in the year 2023 right now. Right. Yeah. This also happens to be the 120th Jubilee cycle. 
It's also the end of the sixth millennial day. You're right there. Right in the middle. The seventh millennium begins here. What happens in the seventh millennium? Jesus returns. Hebrew 4. Hebrews 4, 3 and 4. Blessed are they who enter my rest. The seventh millennial rest. Which is what the Sabbath day every week is a reminder of. Right? That's what we're doing. So, um, so yeah, okay, so I said we're about to graduate to grade, grade 9. So I got these numbers here. They're in the middle. Again, that is equal to this side over here. We're going to start talking about that. Daniel 9, 24. Seventy weeks are decreed to your people and as to your holy city. Alex, what does that mean? No, is everyone on this side of the room is very quiet. They don't want me to pick yeah. on them, right? <laughs> They're not going to... If I say it, you'll see your people. <laughs> okay, 70 weeks are decreed for my people. Who's the Hebrew person here? Anyone speak Hebrew? Was that point to you or you? Okay. Okay. Well, a little bit's good because you'll understand it. First question Who are Daniel's people? Hebrews. Those the Hebrews? That, those that were exiled to Babylon. Very good. Most people say the Jews. <laughs> no, Hebrews. All 12 tribes of Israel are. Right. Judah right? is Jews. The Jews are one tribe, That's right. one twelve. Thank you very right. much. Yes. Here's a book I want you to get. <laughs> 23,000 plague cuneiform tablets were found in the excavation of the Syria Royal Library of, of Asher Bani, how do you say that, Alex? <laughs> Asher, help me, Alex. Asher, <laughs> Asher Banipal? Yes. yes. <laughs> in ancient Nineveh, some of the tablets were found dated around 707 BC and revealed the fate of the Israelites through the recording history. But we can't read it, but they're there. They're in the London Museum. So here's the history. Israel was called by the Assyrians Bet Omri. Mm -hmm. It will say Bet Omri. <laughs> Bet Omri. Now say it like an Assyrian. No, that's an English person. An Assyrian can't say Omri. So they say Bet Khomri. Khomri. Do it like you're hawking on the hair. Khomri. Come on. Come on, Anana. Let's see. Hawk out the hairball. Bet Khomri. Khomri. So that is recorded in these tablets by Tiglath-Pileser, 723 B.C. Then in Sargon, his tablets, this is King Sargon of Assyria, he calls, starts calling the, not bet Khomri, but he calls them Gamari, right? He starts calling them the Gamari, right? And then the K-H changed to a G-H, it's pronounced the same way, Gamari now becomes Gamari, which is just a, a, the U changing to an I. The A changing to an I. You marry, like if you say it, it basically sounds the same. Then King Ezra Hardon in, in, in Ezra Haddon, not Hardon, I'm sorry, pardon me, in 679 starts to say the Gemari, he calls him the Gemara, uh -huh. and then he calls him the Gemari. This was recorded in those tablets. And after that, the G changes to a hard C like cat. It's still called Gemari. And then the hard C changes to a soft C, like uh, Simmer. Sumerians. And who are the Sumerians? Don't read my notes. You get They're the Celtic people. The term British, British, means ish is man, Brit is covenant. So they're called covenant man. Well, they, that's why we call them British. That's when they're put together. That's so cool. It's very cool. There's a lot of stuff in there. Yes, sir. Uh, Joseph, do you know around what time the, that great city fell? Nineveh? Yeah, around what time? No. Okay, that's all. No, I can't tell you. I can research, but no, I don't no, know. No, 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 no. What's your name? Earl. Earl. So, 
I'll have to get some else. Don't thank me. I hit my team. And you deserve it, Earl. Thank you, Bill. This, what's going on here now? <laughs> That's what happens when you pick on Earl. In Iran, they have this huge rock. Ah, okay. They have this huge rock in Iran. And the Iranians just polish it all up. It's written, it's like the, uh, be, is it Behistun rock? Or the, uh, it's got four different languages on it. This is called the Behistun rock. It's got four different languages on it. So with that, we can translate what they're saying in all these languages that we didn't know. Right? So this guy here at the end, mm -hmm. he was Skunka. That's his name. He's King Skunka. He was the king of the Sakan tribe. And the Sakan were known by others as the Scythians or Scythians, yeah. however you want to pronounce it. How do you pronounce it, Earl? Scythians. Scythians? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you. They're also known as the tribe of Saka. And Saka, some of them might migrated into China and became, some of them became known as Utes, or they were known as Judah, Utah, Utes. And they become, they are actually the sons of Isaac because in the Bible it says you will be known by Isaac. These are the sons of Isaac. And this is where we get the Sat sons from. So, you're, I take it you're married now? What does your husband call you as a sweet little deer? Okay, nothing really bad. Just, okay, I'll just leave it alone. I'm stepping on. So it's some honey, honey, or sweetheart, or deer. Sweetie. Sweet, sweet pea. Precious, right? Anonymous. Anonymous? <laughs> yeah, no one knows who he is. What? Oh, is that your wife? That is my wife. Mrs. Anonymous. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Sweet pea. Okay, so what does Jehovah call Israel? The apple of his eye. Okay, that's, that's, give me something endearing. Beloved. Beloved, okay. What else? What? You sure? Okay, so what I'm looking for is he calls it now, ladies. <laughs> My little heifer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, my, yeah. You're my little heifer. Does that make you love me? Okay. So what is heifer in Hebrew? What's heifer in Hebrew? Hebrew, Earl? Anglo. Angli. Angli. That's where we get the Anglo-Saxons from. Right? Do you see how history has been covered up and you do, you miss so much? Yeah. Everything I'm hidden in plain sight. If you go in the Encyclopedia Britannica, mm -hmm. just with that information there, you can now trace Israel. Mm -hmm. Once you understand that the Sakan, the Scythians, and Saka are all the Saxons, you can also understand who we're talking about. Right? Okay? So I explain this in great detail in that book, okay? And it's a big book, 750 pages, so it's not for light reading. 2022 is the year 5858, so if you're really on the ball here, you would have, Anonymous would have picked this up, but he hasn't picked it up yet. 5858 is the year I'm saying it is right now. But the Jews are saying it's 5783 as of Rosh Hashanah this past fall. How come there's 76 years difference? Is that because of what they charged from the Bar Kokhba rebellion? No. Does it have to do with the settlement of when Israel was settled? No. Before it became a nation? No. Okay. Lunar calendar? No. That would only change by 30 days. Here's the answer. Matthew 1 verse 8. There are four kings missing out of the chronology of the show. Uh, and when you add up those four kings, they add up to be 76 years. 
Ahaziah reigned for one year, Athaliah reigned for six years, Joash reigned for 40 years, and Amaziah reigned for 29 years. That adds up to be 76 years. Where do we get that from? Deuteronomy 29.20. Where Jehovah threatened to blot out the names of those who served other gods. Exodus 25, right. 20 verse 5, it says that the sins of the people will be visited to the third and fourth generations. So where do we have that example in the Bible anywhere of ever happening? Or is this just an empty threat? No, it's a real threat. Matthew 1, verse 8. There's your proof. They're missing. And they add up to be 76 years. So, Daniel's people are all 12 tribes. We no. now know why they're 76 years missing. No, they aren't all 12 tribes. Are they? 13, well, Daniel's people are 13 tribes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. See, I can be corrected. <laughs> What is the 70 weeks now? 70 weeks are decreed to your people as to your and to your holy city. What are the 70 weeks? Again, we got to go back to the Hebrew, and it's Shabuah. Everyone say Shabuah. 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 Now, Eileen is telling me this is not the what I'm saying it is. It's not the feminine masculine of the word. But then I showed her the scripture where it says it was. Now she doesn't know what I'm saying. And so it could be either masculine or feminine or... or I, flunked that, I flunked that in high school. Remember, I had 41%, right? Right. Okay. Shabuah. Shabuah. It literally means to seven yourself. Seven yourself. Jehovah speaks in sevens. The Sabbath. The holy days. The sabbatical years. There's a something going on with sevens. So well, here's where this word is used. When you can't figure out what the word means, go and look where it's been translated all these different times. Let's find out what it says. So I'm going to quote each verse now. Oops, that's in the wrong order. And you shall observe the Feast of Weeks. That's the Feast of Shabuah. What's the Feast of Weeks? Shavuot. Very good. Is Pentecost Sunday. And you shall observe the Feast of Weeks, of the first fruits of the wheat harvest, and the Feast of Ingathering at year's end. Numbers 28, 26. And in the day of the first fruits, when you bring a new food offering to Jehovah in your Feast of Weeks, you shall have a holy convocation, the Feast of Shavuot. Deuteronomy 16, 10. And you shall keep the Feast of Shavuot. To Jehovah your God with a measure of a free will offering <coughs> of your hand, which you shall give according to Jehovah your God, according to, as Jehovah your God has blessed you. Deuteronomy 16, 16. Three times in a year shall all your male be, appear before Jehovah your God in the place which he shall choose in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, that's Passover season, in the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Shabuah, mm -hmm. the Feast of Shavuot, and in the Feast of Tabernacles, that's Sukkot in the fall. And you're not to come empty-handed. Daniel 9:26. So this is where we get. To, this is what we're, the word we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And after 62 Shabuah, mm -hmm. Messiah shall be cut off. Ah, come back to that in a moment. The feast of weeks is Shavuot. It's the masculine plural or the feminine plural of the masculine feminine plural thing in a jig that I don't know what it means. <laughs> it's Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday. What's Daniel saying? What was Daniel told to do? Hide the books mm -hmm. until the last days. Right. How long have I been alive? I already told you, 65 years. When did I figure this out? 2005. <coughs> I didn't figure out anything. <coughs> Jehovah revealed it to me. Okay, so I'm not that smart. Remember, I'm the, the rubber into the pencil, right? <laughs> the Feast of Weeks of Shavuot. Leviticus 23, 15. And you shall count to you from the next day after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Seven Sabbaths. How many days is that? 49. 49. Okay. Okay, this is grade nine, right? 49, so now we're not just counting the seven, we're doing seven times seven. 
The Feast of Weeks is seven Sabbaths for a total of 49 days. Shavuot is the Sunday after the 49th day. It's the 50th day. It's Pentecost Sunday. Seventy weeks are decreed to your people. What is Daniel saying? Daniel's telling you 70 Shabua, 70 weeks, 70 times 49, mm -hmm. not 70 times 7. Mm -hmm. So, okay, you all sitting down? Randy, nobody's got any stones, right? Okay, so this prophecy is not talking about Yeshua. This is not talking about Jesus. Uh-oh. Anonymous, you okay with that? My heifer told me not to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> You're brilliant. I love you. You, I'll give you permission to talk. It doesn't count. Okay, so it's 70 times 49. That made it into 3,430 years. That now different. Daniel's talking about something entirely different than what we thought. He's not talking about Yeshua. He's talking about somebody else. So Daniel 9 prophecy is not a messianic prophecy for Yeshua. How do we prove that? Right here in Daniel 9.25. Know therefore. So you should know. You should know this. Know therefore. <coughs> and understand. You should understand this. That from the going out of the command to restore and build Jerusalem. Who gave the command? Cyrus. Who? Cyrus. Cyrus. Who else? Who else? Anyone else? Got a, who else? Azaharius. Xerxes. There's a fourth one. Who's the fourth one? I forgot. Who? Darius. Okay, Earl just got himself the dunce captain. Okay. Because it's none of these guys. That's what Christian theology teaches you. Right, right. Right? Mm -hmm. And that gives you the 483 years right. to Yeshua, and then that leaves you with this mysterious thing that we're about to talk about here in a moment. Mm -hmm. So when we do the chronology from Adam, right, we will come up to the 50th year right here, this is the Exodus, and you can do the chronology, and you will know what year the Exodus is according to the Jubilee cycles. So the Exodus takes place in 1379 B.C., not 1250, not 1450, 1379. Do you know if that, uh, I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. Because that uh, time that you're saying is the Exodus is 1379, just wondering if it lines up with the patterns of Exodus. No. So the patterns of the Exodus has taken and adopted what David Roll said, and they took off uh, 330 years off the Egyptian chronology. And he needs to take off 69 more years. But because I don't have a PhD behind me, all I got is a bum, and they don't listen to me. So I've talked to patterns of evidence a long time ago. No. But you can be able to prove this. How many of you are sheep? So we're not looking for sheep. We're looking for kings and priests in the kingdom. You're to be a king and a priest. That means that you've got to be able to make a decision, black or white. You've got to be able to teach the Torah. And on that teaching, make your decision, black or white. That's what a king does. That's what a priest does. We're not looking for sheep right now. The sheep all get slaughtered. Mm -hmm. along, with the along with the goats. So you're looking to be a king or a priest. So you've got to be able to prove this. You now know when every sabbatical jubilee area is in history. So what you're looking now at is that this is the 50th year. When you do the chronology in Genesis, you come up in Genesis and Exodus, you will get this number. Now, remember, it was about year 2016. There's a, about three little mistakes that people make. And I show you that. You will not end up at 1450 patterns of evidence, or 1250 patterns of evidence. 
So who is who gave the command? <clears throat> what is that command that was given? The word command is the bar. What is the, the, the bar that was given? Well, just let's forget that for a minute. I want to make it simple. If we got 50 jubilees here, and we know that there's 120 jubilees here, mm -hmm. what's that tell you? 70. The 70 Shabuwa of Daniel. Right? It's very simple. So now, here comes the, how do you prove it? Right? right? Again, I'm just another good looking Canadian, you guys are all jealous. How do you prove this? <laughs> the going forth of the command was spoken by Jehovah at the burning bush. Here's number one. Now go, and I will send you. Exodus 3, verse 10. Number two. Exodus 3, 12. Have I sent you? I have sent you. I'm sorry. I have sent you. And when you have brought forth. Number three. Go and gather the people. Who's saying that go? Who's saying, I, 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 I can't talk. I, you know. I, I'm here. Send anonymous. <laughs> let him, let him do it. Let him talk. Here's number four. And when I will bring you out. Here's number five. Uh, where is it? And now let us go. Yeah, there it is, right there. Thank you. Number six. Exodus four twelve. And now go, and I will be with you, and with your mouth. You notice how I stutter? Or mumble or slur, yet I'm still up here. I'm not afraid of you guys. I was at the beginning, but now I see you know, you're all like anonymous. I'm not afraid of you anymore. Okay, so that's number six. Here's number seven. Thank you, Eileen. Here's number seven. And Jehovah said to Moses and Midian, Go, return to Egypt, for all the men who sought you are dead. Seven times. Seven times Jehovah told him, Moses to go get the people. That's the command mm -hmm. to go and get my people that Daniel's talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do we prove this? Really good theory, Joe, mm -hmm. but you're still just a Canadian. Mm -hmm. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to Moses to restore and build Jerusalem. So when did Yeshua restore and build Jerusalem? Where is the scripture that says that? There isn't one. Yet everyone believes this is talking about Jesus. It's not. Because it says Messiah here. Oh, hang on. Yeah, my Messiah is not a prince. My Messiah is a king. Yes. I think, didn't we just do that in the prayer at the beginning? Didn't you say? Yes, he's the king. The king. You're praying to the king. Not a prince. Who's Messiah the prince? So from the command of Moses to Messiah the prince. Is it David? Yes. Woohoo. Woohoo. How do you know that? What's your name? Kristen, but I... Chris, Christian? Because... No, no, what's your name? Kristen. Kristen, okay. How do you know that? How do I know that? Because he's the prince that okay. Jesus prince. talked about. Um, I thought the next slide was the answer there. I don't have it at the next slide. Okay, so I'm going back. Hold that thought, Kristen. We're coming back to you. Okay. So it's not as a Harris, Earl, Artaxerxes, Darius, or Cyrus, 453, 455. So most Christian theologians, they fudge this state to fit their theology. When did Yeshua die? 31, 30, 34. Some even say 37. Some say 29. Depending on which date they pick, they fudge this date. Oh, yes. Right? So if you check the dates they're using, go back in the encyclopedia, look them up, they don't match what they're saying. So this prophecy was first used by the Maccabees. That's 162 B.C. They're trying to prove that uh, John Arconis is the Messiah. That didn't live very long. 
Then the next time to use it, so that's 162 BC, the next time was Rabbi Akiva in the Bar Kopa revolt, that's 133 AD. 50 years after the Bar Kopa revolt, the church fathers began to use it, and then by, it's 202, it's actually 222, or 223, Julius Africanus, after <coughs> four other attempts by other church fathers, um, <coughs> He says what we now call, what you now call, the gap theory. That this was talking about Yeshua with the 70 times 7, 490 years, and then he died in the 483rd year with these the last tribulation years, the seven years that are going to come at any day, could come today. They're not going to come today. But it could come today. No, it's not. But that's what all your churches are saying. It's not. There is no such thing as a gap theory. How many of you count um, anonymous? How many years you've been married? Put them on the spot. Forty. Forty. At twenty-three, did you stop and leave a gap in there of seven years? Nope. Uh, okay. How about you, ma'am? Is there? <laughs> oh, he's to get himself in trouble. Is there such a thing as counting one, two, three? 17. 15, 19, 20, and then as if it's normal? No. Well, why do you all believe that? We do that. That's what we've done with our Christian thinking. It's not right. There's no such thing as a gap theory. That's an invention of Julius Africanus. Guess what? Yeshua never used Daniel 9 prophecy. Who knows the Bible better than anyone else? Yeshua. He never used it once. Neither did any of his apostles. Not once. Christine, who's Messiah the Prince? David. Jeremiah 30. That's there you go. Read it. Go ahead, Christine. Read it. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them. Even my servant David, he shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. Amen. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, <coughs> Prince of Abraham, I, the Lord, have spoken. Amen. Very good. Who said Jeremiah 30? Who's me? David Arms. Oh, Stephanie, go ahead. Yeah, you know, <coughs> I don't have it in front of me, but it says it will raise up David. Up, up, up. For I have it here in front of me, everyone else. <laughs> For it shall be in that day, says Jehovah Host, I will break his yoke from, from your neck and will burst your bonds, and strangers <coughs> shall no, more, no longer enslave him. But they shall serve Jehovah their God and David their king, whom I will raise up. Ezekiel 37, 23, 24, and 25. Nor shall they be defiled. Let's just go to 24. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. When? In the seventh millennium. And there shall be one shepherd to all of them, and they shall walk in my judgment and obey my laws and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given to Jacob, my servant, the land in which our, your fathers have lived. And they shall dwell in them, even they and their sons, and their sons of their sons, forever. And my servant David shall be their ruler for a week. <laughs> ah, Alex, is English, is, is English, is, what's that say, Alex? Forever. Forever. How long is forever, Alex? Por siempre. Por siempre. Did I say that right? Yes, yes sir. So I used to speak Spanish in high school because all the hot chicks were in Spanish class. Wow. <laughs> then I got a job in Quebec, uh -huh. and I was the only one speaking French with a Spanish accent. Oh. That's where I was. Now you're, you're going to trip me to remember my Spanish. <laughs> Hosea 3, 4. For the sons of Israel shall live many days with no king and no ruler and with no sacrifice and no pillars, no ephod or teraphim. Afterwards, after what? Afterwards, the sons of Israel shall return and seek Jehovah their God and David their king. And they shall fear Jehovah and his goodness in the end of days. That's now. Amen. Right. So who are we talking about here? Christine? King David. King David. Know therefore, know therefore, and understand. That from the going out of the command to restore and build Jerusalem to Messiah the Prince, King David, mm -hmm. 
shall be seven Shabuwa. What? So what did that just tell you? From the going forth of the command at the burning bush to Moses, mm -hmm. you're to count seven Shabuwa. Seven times forty-nine. So if I'm saying, what I'm telling you is right, then we should count seven Jubilee cycles and see King David after the uh, burning bush. How do we prove this? Through the chronology. Just counting. We count seven Jubilee cycles, 343 years. So again, most Christians lump the seven in with the 62 and they get 69, or they go 62 and, and have the seven the last seven years of the tribulation mm -hmm. at the end. And they totally fudge this prophecy. Well, let's just read it the way it says. Seven weeks first. Seven Jubilee cycles. So we're going to count. There's the Exodus. Mm -hmm. Three years before. Now I'm, okay, so this is now Joe Dumont theology. Okay. Okay? It's not. First king, second king, or any other kings, it's just King Joe here. <laughs> this is Passover. Right. That's the Exodus. Before the Exodus, all the firstborn animals died. The animals that were killed by hail, I believe it was, also died. All the animals. And then there's another plague where all the animals died. How long does it take to replace all the animals? The cattle. Okay, it's like a year. I'm, I'm giving each curse a year, mm -hmm. right? So I'm, so I'm just, this is Joe Dumont theology now, remember. So I'm saying Moses began the plague right here around 1383, three years before Passover. It didn't all happen in one week. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can't prove this. It's Joe Dumont theology. I'm just, I got a little point to point out. That's why I'm making a little emphasis here. So you're going to count. That's why I got these numbers here because I know you're in grade nine, and I want you to be able to count and not miss one. So this is the first jubilee cycle. This would be the second one. And then you know, those of you who don't trust me, take a picture. Make sure I don't fudge any of these dates in here because they're all going like this, right? Make sure I don't miss one. There is one date that's off. It's a typo. But you won't see it because that's in the uh, the other side. I'm just tell you, I, we found one typo. Okay. So there's two and three. Again, you can also count jubilee cycles here: the 50th, the 51. There's 52 and 53. There's 54. There's four and five jubilee cycles. There's six and seven, 56. After seven jubilee cycles, you shall see King David. King David was born 1040. King David was anointed by Samuel when he was a shepherd. We don't know when, but he's a young boy. Right. Mm -hmm. He becomes king over Judah in 1010. Mm -hmm. And then king over all of Israel. I don't know why I never highlighted that, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. over, over all Israel in 1003 mm -hmm. BC. King David, your Messiah. What's the word Messiah mean? Anointed. Anointed. Mashiach. King David is your anointed. He's your Mashiach. That's right. Guess what? Are you anointed? Yes. yes. You're Mashiach. Mm -hmm. Alex is my Messiah. Amen. Right? Yes. Earl's my Messiah. Yes. I'm my Messiah. I'm Mashiach. Amen. You're all Mashiach. That's important because you've got to understand the rest of this prophecy now. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to Moses at the burning bush to, uh, to rebuild Jerusalem, King David rebuilt Jerusalem. King David rebuilt the rampart. King David fixed the Milo. Second Chronicles, it's right there. King David rebuilt the wall. To Messiah, King David, shall be seven weeks. You've now just proven it. And 62 weeks. Where's 62 weeks? 62 Jubilee cycles. Where does that bring you to? Okay. 
Okay, I'm pausing here for a moment. David is anointed. There, so I'm just repeating myself now. I got ahead of my notes. King David, Samuel, uh, King Samuel here, King David as a child, all of Judah, all of Israel. Right? Mm -hmm. Here's the scriptures to back that up. Okay. Now we're going to talk about the 62 weeks. Where does 62 weeks bring you to? So that's a total of 69 weeks. Remember what I showed you before? Mm -hmm. 69 weeks right here. Mm -hmm. That's 1996. That prophecy is telling you that after seven weeks, after seven jubilee cycles, you will see King David. Who's the subject of the, the uh, verse? King David. King David. Right. So after 69 jubilee cycles, you will also see, see King David again. King David is about to be resurrected. And you're at the year 2023. When is King David going to be resurrected? Between 2023 and the end of 2044 or 2045, before 2045 begins. In this time period right here, somewhere in there, King David will be raised up again. You want to know when? The mystery of the Jewish rapture. Oh, it's very simple to understand. Have I got your attention yet? Am I just good looking or am I handsome and tall too? <laughs> Alex? You're a Mashiach. I'm a Mashiach, all right. Okay. See, Alex didn't have 41 in high school. Okay. I know who to sit by. Yeah. <laughs> So 7 Jubilee cycles plus 62 Jubilee cycles equals 69 Jubilee cycles. So I've now got 89 sabbatical Jubilee year proofs. This one, you can have this one for free. That will give you 12. You don't need to buy anything I'm selling. You can get that for free. And with just that alone, you can prove all this stuff. Okay, so take a picture of it. Download it, go to my website. And if you don't find it, ask me, I'll send it to you for free. It's a PDF. It's not a book. You print it off, it's 480 pages. Okay? We have nothing, nothing here today for kindergarten children. We are teaching a master's degree in theology. Very advanced, too. Very advanced. Most theologians, how many theologians are in the room? Right. Oh, uh, one. Awesome. Thank you for coming. Most theologians do not want to hear this. Because that means they've got to change their teachings. I'm, I, you know, I'm not here to prove anything except the truth. Because I want to know when my Messiah, my real Messiah, King David, will be here. And that's coming up. So we've got uh, the charts. Again, they're there. They're on Amazon. So this is your bathroom. Pee break, sorry. Pee break. <laughs> We're about to show you some things that are going to stun you. I'm going to show you when King David is going to come back. I'm going to show you the very day. I'm going to show you the abomination when it's going to be set up. I'm telling you this so you don't spend all day in the, the bathroom. <laughs> Behind locked doors.